Father's Day to all the visitors today. I pray that God bless your heart as we celebrate together, you know, the fathers, not only in our house, but in our city, in our great nation. Yes. If you are visiting us with this morning, pray that God bless your heart. Amen. See my sister Salu at the back there, put your hands together. Yes. Good to yes. have you, sister Salu, and all the fathers in blue and white. What a color, eh? yeah. I, I sent it back to the, the lady who uh, we order, whom we ordered the stuff from, and uh, she said to me, Pastor, I'm going to put it up in our Facebook 
and tell them these are the men from Auckland. So be look out, it's gonna be uh, uh, online very soon, your photo, especially the front row here. Uh, men, men, let's go to the Word of God this morning. I know there are a few uh, items from the youth, from the Sunday school, and from the men as well. But let's go to the Word of God, which Amen. is the most important thing in our existence is the Word of God. And I pray that God will bless your heart as we come to the Word of God this morning. This morning I'm going to preach a very simple uh, uh, message today just to encourage the fathers, not only the fathers, but our children and everyone in the house. Amen? Amen. Because I believe this is a word for all of us today. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that God will bless your heart as we come to the Word of God. It is from Proverbs 1. And many of our Sunday school kids, I believe you all know the words this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, it's very simple, simple words. Amen. It's, it's going to bless your heart. Proverbs 1. We're going to share from verse number 8 and 9, 10, and 13, uh, 15 this morning. To be on the screen, Proverbs 1, verse 8 and 9, verse 10 and 15 and 16 will be our text this Sunday. Here's the Word of God. I'm going to read it from uh, the new uh, um, King James, verse 8. <laughs> My son, hear the instruction of your father. And do not forsake the law of your mother. Amen. For there will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. My son, verse 10, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Verse 15, my son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. It is a powerful word. And can you see the word of God this morning? It's between a son and a father. Or a son and a daughter. Or between us, the children of God, because we are sons and daughters of God, we are brothers and sisters. Yes. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Amen. My son, hear the laws of your mother. Wow. Mothers, they're more like Moses with the laws. We all experience that from our homes, from our families. Mothers, they're very strong. But the Bible tells us, my son, hear the instruction of your father. Amen. Fathers are for instructions training and teaching their children in the ways of God. So I'd like to entitle my message to Sunday Church, Your Father's Heart. Amen. I shared this 12, oh, 12 months ago in our morning devotion, but I hope that will inspire somebody. I hope that will encourage somebody, Your Father's Heart. Amen. Proverbs 4, verse 10. But when my father is of for you, hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. Amen. Again, the father to his son, son, receive my sayings or my instructions so that your years may be blessed, Amen. may be prospered. Maybe 
many. Many years ago, I, 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 I sent in my heart to challenge my two boys through a message in Gateway, Melbourne, and I shared entitled the message, Son, do not take it to the grave with you. And from Gateway to Melbourne to one of the mega church in Queensland, I asked somebody to build a coffin. And even here in the combined service here many years ago, brought the coffin and put their all the dreams in a piece of paper. And I said to my two boys through this message, son, do not take it to the grave. Man. I'm talking about your dreams, your songs, your music, your talent. Do not take it with you to the grave. Do something about Amen. You remember last Sunday? From last Sunday to this morning, I continue to share with so many of you about the message last Sunday. Because I noticed that most of you last Sunday missed the word of God. Could be you the next big thing. But this morning, I'd like to invite you, son, please, listen. Amen. I know mother's love is incomparable, the mother's love. But the father's heart, it is immeasurable. Yes. I listen, uh, watching so many... Uh, <coughs> words from many of the island players either in the rugby or NRL or, or rugby league or whatever you know field in the sports field most of them attributed their achievement to their father or to their parents either Samoans or Tongan they're so grateful for the push for the inspiration for the challenge from their parents to get up and train and go hard on their dreams. I know the love of a mother and I know the heart of a father. Because this Sunday is a Father's Day, I would like to encourage us from a heart of a father or a man. Not only in my own family, but in the church of God. Amen. Son, daughter, I hope that you listen this morning. I hope that you tune in, tune in this morning and catch the message because the word this morning will take you. It could be you the next big thing. Amen. Proverbs 10 verse 1. Proverbs 10 verse 1. A wise son makes his father happy. But a foolish son brings grief to his mother. A wise son always makes his daddies happy. But a foolish son brings shame and grief to his mother. One of my greatest joy in life. You know when I, I first got saved, and I thought to myself, I remember I was in Bible school in Vanuatu 40 to 38 years ago, 39 years ago. I can't stop thinking about my brothers. I can't stop thinking about my sisters. Eight of us all together. And I said to myself, man, if they die, they will go to hell. And I've been standing in the camp for so many years praying for my brothers and my sisters and my parents, praying that God will touch them and turn them around and bring them to God. Amen. One day I asked the Bible school principal and I said to him, Sir, I can't stop thinking about heaven and earth. And he said to me, what's about heaven and heaven? I said, I, I, I had five brothers or four brothers and three sisters. I can't stop thinking about that my brothers and my brothers and sisters will all go to hell because they are not saved. 
And I said to him, what happened if I go up to heaven in my small mind? What happened if I go up to heaven and look down to my brothers and my sisters? He said to me, young man, do you, do you know that song soon and very soon we're going to go to heaven? And he said, no more time. There are no more sorrows. There are no more sickness. There are no more you know, pains. And he said to me, the kind of feelings is only for here, down here. When we go up to heaven, there is no such a feelings, emotions. You're not going to see or have any bad feelings about yourself or your brothers and sisters. So your opportunity right now is to reach out for them and help them to find God. And that's what I've been doing the last 40 years. But you know, a few weeks ago, I was invited to open that new sanctuary in Brisbane. And in Brisbane, they, I don't know, but they asked my brother to introduce me. You know? It should be the senior pastor's, uh, you know, thing to introduce the guest speaker. But they asked my small brother to introduce the speaker. And last night I was thinking about his introduction. And we all know Pastor Lady. Pastor Lady got up and he said, everything that I know, everything that I am, anything to do about me and whatever ministry to God is all from my big brother. Hallelujah. The things that I know, the person that I am today is all coming down from this person who are proud to speak the word of God. Hallelujah. And I said to myself, wow. Because I know as Islanders, our dream is to see our children play for the All Blacks. And I said to the church in, in Melbourne a few months ago, it is okay. But listen to what statistics says. 99.99.99% made it to that level. Out of the 5 million people here, 28 million in Australia, your chance to make it to the Wallabies or to the All Blacks is 99.99. But most of, the, of our parents and most of us parents, we push our kids to go and kill themselves in the rugby field in order for your name and your tribe and your village pop up in a Facebook. And we smack our kids, go to training. And you spend your life and your money. But this Sunday, I want to share with you the heart of godly fathers. Whatever your dream may be, go for it. But I thought to myself, I need to pull some few fathers from the Bible and hopefully will inspire us the fathers, will challenge our sons and our daughters, will push us the church to go up to another level. The first one, Job 1, verse 5. Job so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify or consecrate them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus Job did regularly. I don't know about you. We always talk about Job, the suffering servant, the suffering patriot, or the suffering man of God. 
But to me personally, Job to me is the best and one of the greatest father ever lived in the history of humankind. Why do I say that? Because you know from the Bible, Job was a righteous man. Job was a filthy, righteous man. Yet, Job was a God-fearing man. Why? <clears throat> Job was a God-fearing man. Not only that he fear God, but the Bible tells us whenever his children come in together and whatever parties or celebrate their birthdays or, or whatever, the man of God, the father of this house, always made an offering, a burnt offering for his children and sanctified their children. Fathers, Parents, Job, he was rich and wealth, strong and righteous. Hallelujah. Yet he remembered his sons and his daughters. Hallelujah. And whenever his kids going out, his father come back to the presence of God and offer a sacrifice. God, Hallelujah. sanctify my children. I don't know what happened in the party last night. I don't know what happened in the festivity or whatever father they celebration. I pray for my children, God. Help them, protect them, and touch them that they may remember who you are. The first father this Sunday. Amen. Amen. Job teaches his sons and daughters how to fear God. Amen. I had a coffee with, with Leah a couple months ago or three months ago. And even this morning I said the same thing to him and his wife. I said to them, I watched this video, a preacher from America a few months ago, and he said, parents drag your children to church. Don't give up dragging your children to the church. I'm speaking to you out of experience. My son had been sitting on the front row from day one he was born to this very day. Amen. Go with the here all night prayer meetings here. In, in the early days, I took him, we put our children, sit in church. And look at him. It is our responsibility, not the culture, not the school, not the church. Yes. Not the church. It's not that it is our responsibility to teach your kids. It's not mine. First and foremost, it is your call from God. Yeah. To teach your kids what fear of God is all about. Yeah. Because if they can't fear God, they can't fear anybody. Yeah. We have so much problem in our society because of the church. Now we allow technology to teach our children. Even our babies, they all look at the phone. Hey, mama, keep phone. Babies play to keep here quiet or keep. <laughs> you see the problem that we are having today? It's supposed to be you fathers. Yes. Teach your kids how to fear God. Amen. And Solomon, the wisest, the richest man, tells us from his writings. And when you teach your kids young, they will grow up 
Amen. Amen. They will never walk away yes, from the ways of God. Amen. Secondly, because of our time, Genesis 22, I love this, verse 7. Genesis 22, verse 7. But I sp uh, Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. The same chapter, Genesis 22, verse 1. This is what verse 1 says. And God tested Abraham. Hallelujah. And God said to Abraham, Abraham, take your one and only son. Take him to Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice, burnt offering unto you. I believe we are familiar with the story here. Isaac and Sarah been praying, God, please, we need an heir in our family. We need you. You promised to us, God, that you're going to bless us. And here we are, 99 years old or 100 years old, we still have no children. Wow. But he is the man of God. 100 years old. 99 years old. They're so old. They've been waiting for the promise of God. We all know the story. Abraham said to his son Isaac, Isaac, get up. Pick up the fire. Let's go and sacrifice and worship God. Then we come back. Imagine in your heart this morning, fathers. If you are Abraham. And God said to you, Agapen, take your only daughter and offer him as a sacrifice to me. I believe they, though he's a spiritual person, I believe he will ask, he will challenge, he will do his best to get out of this covenant. God, we've been praying for our son. We only have one daughter, God. Why don't you be give me to that person who have many children? Give it to Sonny. <laughs> Sonny got a few chosen ones. <clears throat> but when God said to Abraham, obediently, humbly receive the chance. Said to his son, son, get up early. We're going up to worship God. Hallelujah. And on the way, as we heard from the reading this morning, the son Isaac said to his father, 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 here is the fire which where is the lamb for the sacrifice. And Abraham said, Son, God will provide. Amen. What the Bible telling us this morning? Yeah, you all know the story. God, uh, Abraham said to his servant, wait here, me and my son will go up and worship God, then we will come back. Imagine the moment with the top of the mountain, him and I said. The Bible tells us he bowed him and placed him on top of the fire and pulled out his sepulchre, his knife, to kill his son. And God stopped him. Touch him not. What I'm saying this morning, church, in our Father's Day 2022, Father Abraham teach his son how to trust God. Amen. Amen. Wow. You remember I share that. November, December 2020. We're almost to the point that we're gonna have nothing to pay for the lease of this house. 
We just leased the building for three months and all of a sudden, we struck by this news that by Feb on the following year, this is December, we need to do something to pay for the lease. And my son said, Dad, ask Melbourne to pay for our lease. Did the ECL understand? And I said, son, that's a wrong answer. What would be the best answer that we need help, we need money, and only Melbourne Church can help us and pay for the lease. I said, that's a wrong answer. And what is the right answer? Son, the right answer is, if the church ran out of money by February next year, I will pay March, you pay April, and Kitty will pay May. Hallelujah. And I went back to Mel. Report back the church to the board there. And they all say, Pastor, I, I, we thought that we paid for the lease in Auckland. They said, no, we didn't agree on anything about Auckland lease. And one elder said, Pastor, let's pay the lease in Auckland. I said, that's a wrong solution to the problem or to the challenge for Melbourne. And what is the right solution for Melbourne and Auckland Church? I said, don't worry. I want my son to learn how to trust God. Amen. And what is your strategy, Pastor? If the money empty, I will pay the first month, and Sam will pay the second month. I want Sam to grow, to know God, and to trust God, because the Bible said, he is Yahweh Chira, the God who look out for his children, make sure that everything is ready, everything is provided, and everything is there for you. And the elders, the board said, okay, let's do that. Let's teach them how to trust God. <laughs> After four weeks, I received a phone call. Pastor, I got some money. I want to bless the work of God. Yes, Auckland need that blessings. Hallelujah. And I remember that day because that person forwarded the 47000 to my account. 47000 to my account. That's enough to pay the whole lockdown of Gateway Church. Hallelujah. And I snapped something and sent it to Sam and Kitty and we had a video call. It was a bit emotional. I said, guys, who said that God is dead? Hallelujah. A few months ago, we said that we are going to have an issue with our payment at this very time. Mm -hmm. But look at God. Amen. God, Abraham said to his servant, Abraham said to his son, Son, God will provide. To all the fathers Amen. in the house, to all the mothers in the house, I'm here to challenge you in our Father's Day 2022. Teach your household how to trust God. Teach your children, teach your family how to bless their trust in God. Not in the center link or whatever, wings or whatever you have here. Not in the government. I heard my friend passes so the Lord here was speaking at the conference or the gathering pastors gathering a few months ago. And he said, pastors, put up your hands, you receive benefits from the government. <coughs> and he was shocked when he saw so many people put up their hands. How many of you live in the government house? Many of them put up their hands. What's going on with your God? What's wrong with our God? We're supposed to help the poor people, the weak people. It's okay if you are disabled. It's okay if you are aging, it's okay if you have a... But if you are young, strong, and free, your God, my God, 
Amen. shall supply our needs according to his fullness. Amen. Let's Amen. teach our children how to trust Amen. in God. Very because of our time today. Listen to the word of God. Oh, I wish that this message for each Sunday should be the whole year. Uh, First Chronicle 28 verse 20. First Chronicle 28 verse 20. And David said to his son Solomon, be strong and be of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor dismay, for the Lord my God will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. to his son. All his life he conquered the world and he accumulated the whole wealth of the nations of the world. And now come to the end of his life, of his time, he said to his son, son, I'm done. Here's all my wealth. I want you, son, to use it for the house of God. And yeah. Solomon, the son, took the throne with the same burden, same inspiration, same dream as his father. He took it to the throne and built a house for God. Yeah. Yeah. What did he teach his son about? He teach his son about the love for God's house. Ooh, 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 ooh. Father's Day is all about the father and the son. The father and his daughter. Hallelujah. I know we want people to know you and talk about you and your family, your achievement, your talents, and your education, and whatever. But how many of us here this Sunday? Ever stop and think about the house of God? Amen. Thank God for the church. Every Sunday, we come into the house. We worship Him. We honor Him. We fellowship. We catch up. We fellowship. But how many of us have the heart of David and Song? You remember, I always love to quote that verse from John 2, verse 17. You remember the day when Jesus whipped, when Jesus met, when Jesus kicked those who had changed money in his father's temple. And here, when his disciples saw Jesus that day, verse 17, the Bible tells that his disciples remember that it was written, Seal for your house has eaten me up. I have a question for Christians. I have a question for us, this Father. What is in your heart? Because I have a question for you. 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 Most of us, we pray for all kinds of stuff. But David, but in the man of our sea, he said to his son, son, be strong and be courageous. Amen. I accumulated enough wealth to build the house of God, but you must add to it if needed. Son, get up and build the house of God. You know, I have two sons. My second son is going after money, doing his own business, and there's nothing wrong with it. My other son has been following us from day one to this very day. 
You see all these stuff here, also that's a, the keyboard there to belong to Neo. The stuff here, all this stuff here, it doesn't belong to our church. Do you know in the Melbourne church, all the stuff in the front belong to my son? What I'm saying, do you have a heart for the house of God? I know you have a heart for your children, you have a heart for their school, you have a heart for their sport, you have a heart for so many things. But remember, I'm sharing with you this Sunday, the heart of a godly father. Yeah. And so many times I said to my son, stop buying stuff for church. You help your dad first. <laughs> I'm the one who slowly would spend all his money for the media stuff, the equipment stuff, all his life. I think that's why he don't want to get married. Firstly, he's no girl. Secondly, Peter's going in love with the house. Oh, yeah. Church, what do you teach your kids? Yes. To go and get a degree after degree. To go and play rugby and hopefully one day everyone will talk about you, daddy. It's not about the son's dream, it's all about the parents. And I still remember this story. When this guy finished his degree, graduation day, now he's a doctor. And graduation, they call up this young man's name to come out. When he got up, they present to him uh, the certificate. And he said, wait, I need to call my daddy to come. And then fourthly, he just want to honor his father. His father walked out so proud of his son. Now he's doctor so and so. He got up on the stage and he received the certificate. And on their way home, the, the son said to the father, Father, I hope you are happy now. And the father stopped and he said, Son, what do you mean I'm happy? You suppose you are the one who should be happy. And when the son said, Dad, I hope your dream now fulfilled. <coughs> I never want to be a doctor. Never want to be a doctor. I went and tried my best because it is your heart, Dad, so that everyone talk about your son is a medical doctor. But Dad, that's why I call you to the stage so that you come and receive your piece of paper. Dad, let me go. I'm not a doctor. I'm not into medicine, but I done it for you. Then. I never push my kids to ministry. I mean, I push them to discover God's call for their life. I don't really push them to become like me, because this place here is a core of God. It is an anointing of God. Yes. But I want them to discover who they are in the light of God's word. Let me finish. The forefather, listen to the word of God today. Luke 15, verse 20. Luke 15, verse 20. This is what I share last Father's Day. Devotion. And he arose and came to his father. When he was still a great way off, his father saw him in his compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have seen the kings of heaven and in your sight and no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his seven, bring out the best. And we all know the story. Verse 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. 
He was lost in his found, and they began to be merry. The prodigal son. The first one, Job, teach his children how to fear God. David teach his children how to love the house of God. Abraham teach his son how to trust God. But there is something about this father here. It's not so much about the father here. I mean, the name is not there in the Bible. But there is something that I hope that will touch your heart today. We all know the story. The son took off, left home, and pursued his selfish <coughs> ambition. Wasted his life and his money. And he returned home. He said in his heart, my dad and many servants, I better go home and ask him to make me part of his servanthood team. What this father teaches us something, and I hope that our children, and I hope that everyone in the house today, he teaches his son how to come back home. There is no place like home. Because the Bible, when he's a far distant, when he was so distant away from the home, the father stood out and looked out for him. And so he started to appear on the scene. His father recognized my son is on his way home. And the father is in the house. I'd like to encourage you and challenge you this Sunday. The Bible teaches us something today. That we are here to bring our children back to him. Sons and daughters in the house. There is no place like home. You can come home. You can come home. There is a place your father prepared for you. Your mother prepared for you. I don't know your situation, but the Bible calling us today to come back home. Amen. Amen. This is your home. This is your place. Hallelujah. Nobody will ever take the place of your father and your mother. That's why we call it home. It's a place for you. Let me finish today. Matthew 7 verse 11. And if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? Amen. That's the heart of our heavenly father is to give good gifts. Amen. I always wonder because so many people they pray for something and they end up complaining and, and turn away from God as they've been praying for this, been praying for that. And they paint a different picture about God. But this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. If that's how much your father loved you. You know, I know my dad loved me so much. And I miss him, especially since we moved down here. I wish my dad still alive. He would be here every Sunday. And I miss him too much. To think about, you know, the many of us here who, unfortunately, your father is no longer around. And your father is no longer there. Father's Day and Mother's Day always bring something to our attention and to our memory. Amen. And so many people, they ignore their fathers. So many people, they take for granted their parents. Until their parents pass away, <coughs> mm -hmm. 
It doesn't matter where you at this Sunday. I like to remind you this Sunday. The Bible tells us if that how much your have, your earthly father loves you, imagine the love of your yes. heavenly Hallelujah. father. Yes. And that's the message for the day. The heart of the father, our heavenly father, is to bless you if you open your mouth and talk to him. He will give you if you open your heart and respond to him. Amen. The prodigal son, father, his heart is to bring you back, sons and daughters. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. To David's heart, his heart is to see Solomon and all his grandchildren growing up and love the house like grace. The heart of Abraham is to teach his children that God is still the same. Amen. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Amen. God will provide. Amen. Lastly, Job teaches us something this Sunday, church. To fear God. Fear. Maybe his son missed it. Maybe his daughter missed it. That's why he got up early and sanctify. Maybe lay hands on children. Maybe pray for his student. Maybe encourage his student. But he got up every day and sanctify his student. Wow. What a challenge. Can we all rise to our feet this Sunday? Fathers, mothers, children, son. You have a mission in life. You have a mission in your family. You have a mission in our society, in our community. To show the Father's heart. His heart not to penalize. His heart not to judge you. His heart is to bring you back home. Because of our time and our program this Sunday, wherever you may be, just open your heart and let me pray for each and every one of us in the house. The Father's heart. You know, I have two girls and two boys. Most times they want to listen. And many times I said, I wish that somebody is praying every single morning and present your name and your children before God every single day. Every single day I'm thinking my plan is for you, my child, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren. bless you, to protect you, to provide you, to help you. Sons and daughters, parents this Sunday, let's give our heart to Jesus. Amen. Let's allow Jesus to come in and take over. It's hard for you and me to come back to you. His blessings available to whosoever call upon him. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what's on your plate this afternoon. The Father's heart. For you, my child. For you, my son. For you, my daughter. To live an abundant life. To have a great life. To have a great future. That's why the Father, as we heard from Carlo, from our host today, so loved the world, he gave his son again to save you and to help you. Open your heart and say yes to Jesus. Open your family, 
Say yes to Jesus. Amen. Open your dream. Thank you, Lord. Open your plan. Let Jesus show you his heart. Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we all come before you. Thank you for speaking to us, his father's name. God, we surrender. I surrender my life, my family, my children, my grandchildren, and gateway family before you from have your way, Father, as we commit ourselves to you this time. That's the prayer for everyone in this place. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost, I pray that you touch our children, yes, Lord. the kids who are yes, Lord. touch them. Yes, Lord. Remind them, God, that you love them, that you have a plan for them. And you, you plan for them not to hurt, not to harm, but to give them a great future. Yes. yes. What a word. A father's heart. Every father has the heart of the best of their children. Amen. 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 Church, parents, we need to teach our children. This is the same message that the mother of the house was encouraging to women. And that is the same message I pass on to our women. We teach our children. If we want our children to be, if you truly love your children, teach them. Don't teach them with the technology. They will be lost. The word of God is coming today to challenge us. Let's teach our children. That is the true heart of a father to teach our children. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. Let us come to our program celebration of our Father's Day. The first one is the Sunday school. And after the Sunday school will be the youth, and it will be closed down with our father's item in this evening. Let us uh, invite the youth to come at the Sunday school. Give our hands to the Sunday school to come.
guys will just stay at home. Because I can do the work by myself, and three of you guys can't even do it. Son. People, do it. Bobby, make sure these two listen to you and cut the onions, eh? Yep. How are we
Praise God. Praise God. Let's go, see. Oh, two, I got you, nigga. Oh, yeah. 